he can save and he can heal. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. When your enemy has assailed and your heart begins to fail, don't forget that God in heaven answers prayer. He will make a way for you and will lead you safely through. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. When your youthful days are gone and old age is sailing on and your body bends beneath the weight of care, he will never leave you then. He will go with you to the end. Take your body to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your body to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there.
have a Sunday message today. We shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 5. John 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day, it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed was not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus, and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, 
But these things I say that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape, and ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? May God help us to be doers of the world. Amen.
Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the great expectation of your people. We're asking, Lord, that everyone will be touched, transformed, blessed, delivered, set free, and multiple blessings will come upon every life in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding. Help us to behold wonderful, wondrous things out of your word in Jesus' name. We pray that nobody will go back home empty handed in Jesus' name. Make this year for everyone a fruitful year, a year of progress, a year of power. A year of climbing up to the place you have for everyone in Jesus' name. <laughs> Happiness and joy in every life. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. In Jesus' name. For us in all the states in Nigeria and all the countries in Africa and beyond Africa and everyone online anywhere in the world, I want to tell you that we are in Ondo State at this time for a Bible study in Jesus' name. And it's a wonderful time to be here. And you need to pay attention. Because what we are talking about appears straightforward, appears simple. It appears that here is what we already know. But I believe that the Lord will reveal deep and mighty things to everyone, even tonight, in Jesus' name. In our Bible study series, we are now in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And we are looking at verses 1 all through to verse 11 but i'll read verse 1 and read verse 2 look at your bible first corinthians chapter 7 we're looking at verse 1 now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me it is good for a man not to touch a woman in verse 2 it says nevertheless to avoid fornication let every man have his own wife, and every woman have her own husband. The topic tonight is believers' commitment to God's unchanging, unchangeable precepts in marriage. Believers' commitment to God's unchangeable precepts in marriage. Let me pick out two words there for you to understand what we are talking about. One word is unchangeable. Unchangeable. As you think about God, it says, I am God, I change not. And everything God has started, everything God instituted, everything God put in place remains unchanged unchanging unchangeable why because it's god before the creation of the world he has been from all eternity it is god and because of that whatever he puts in place whatever he says remains unchangeable in particular now precepts in marriage remains unchangeable but not only that the power of his majesty that also remains unchangeable anything connected with god every time you are thinking about god i will say look at his power the power of his majesty because he's connected with god it's unchanging not only that the possibilities 
of his manifestation. God manifests himself. And we're told about with God all things are possible in the past, at present, in the future. Those possibilities are unchangeable. Every time you are thinking about God, any subject connected with God remains the same, remains unchanging, and remains unchangeable. How about the prophecy of his mysteries? He has mysteries, and he has declared all that to us. And that because it's connected unto the Lord Almighty. It's not only marriage that is unchangeable. It's mysteries are unchangeable. And so as you go through your Bible and you read about his prophecy, his proclamation, they're coming from God and you are very careful. You are not touching them you are not changing them you are not removing anything away you are not adding anything also the provision of the messiah is saint christ our savior our redeemer and as the messiah he makes provision the provisions he had at that time and the provisions he has today and the provision he'll have in the future all those provisions of the messiah are unchangeable what i'm telling you is this we consider marriage today but understand that everything god has put in place remains unchanging and remains unchangeable also the promises in his message whenever you read your bible you have the message coming from god and there are promises there are precepts as the precepts are unchanging also the promises are unchanging the performance of his mercy is a merciful god is a faithful god and because he is god his mercy remains the same it's not that the other people in another generation they add the mercy of god how about a generation here the performance of his mercy is still unchangeable and the proclamation through his messengers all the proclamations of his messengers in the old covenant in the new covenant until this day when he makes any proclamation coming through his messengers they remain unchangeable and now the marriage precepts the precepts of god in marriage they also remain unchangeable note this in your mind note this in your heart that whenever you think about God or talk about God you are not thinking this time now is a new time this time now is a new generation and therefore things are different you remain the same I am God I change not therefore the children of Jacob the people of Israel are not destroyed and because God is God, unchanging, He will preserve your life. He will preserve your marriage. He will preserve your family. And everything He has declared concerning you, they will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Now, the precepts in marriage. We're looking at three things here today. Number one, God's unchangeable institution of marriage. God himself instituted marriage. He put marriage in place. Adam did not ask, I bought marriage. God, it didn't come from Adam. 
it didn't come from man it came from God and because it came from God it remains the same today that's why you have God's unchangeable institution of marriage number two gracious unpretentious intimacy in marriage that's how God has planned it there'll be intimacy in marriage husband and wife it will be unpretentious unpretending unhypocritical it will be transparent it will be truthful it will be faithful it will be it will be satisfying it will be fulfilling and it is gracious god's institution and god's intention is that in marriage there will be grace there will be love there will be understanding there will be interdependence between the man and the woman gracious unpretending unpretentious unhypocritical intimacy in marriage number three god's unchallengeable instructions for the marriage instructions that he has given concerning marriage that no one can challenge that no one can alter that no one can modify that no one can improve on whatever god does is perfect and you cannot improve on it you might be intelligent can you compare your intelligence to that of the almighty god you might have read wide can you consider all those authors you have read can you compare them with the almighty god you cannot improve on his instruction and you cannot change or challenge his instructions number three then god's unchallengeable instructions for the marriage let's come to number one number one is god's unchangeable institution of marriage we're reading from first corinthians chapter 7 verses 1 and 2 now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me it is good for a man not to touch a woman in verse 2 it says nevertheless to avoid fornication let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband here we're reading in first corinthians it was so peculiar to the corinthian church that they were right to paul the apostle how about this marriage issue but understand the people at rome did not have to write and paul the apostle gave them the institution of marriage understand the Ephesians church did not have to write I about marriage he was inspired of god and without any questioning without any interrogation paul the apostle wrote about marriage to the Ephesians church and in all the parts of scripture they didn't have to write here is the word here is the standard of marriage according to the word of god but now they wrote and as they wrote they had to give them the instruction inspired by the lord that this is the will of god three things as we look at that point number one number one is the purpose of marriage number two the preparation for marriage number three the permanence of marriage look at number one in number one we're looking at the purpose of marriage it says in verse two there 
1 Corinthians 7 verse 2 Nevertheless, to avoid fornication Let every man have his own wife And let every woman have her own husband That states very clearly there The purpose of marriage Number one is to preserve purity in the church Purity in the community Purity in the world To avoid sinning To avoid the works of the flesh To avoid immorality To avoid living like animals Let everyone have his own wife Everyone her own husband Look at Genesis chapter 2 And we're reading from verse 18 in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 and the Lord God said it is not good for the man that he should be alone I will make and help meet for him I will make here is God's decision and nobody twisted the hand of God to say, I must get married, I must get married. God in his own volition and God in his own absolute perfect will said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make is the one that made Eve for Adam. And since that time is the one that makes the wife for the husband look at verse 24 in verse 24 therefore that what therefore means because of what God has done for Adam because of what God has instituted for the first family therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother understand this is not talking about Adam. Adam had no father, had no mother. This is not talking about Eve. Eve had no father, had no mother. This is talking about all the generations, all the offspring of Adam that will follow. This is talking about you. This is talking about me. This is talking about everyone alive today. Therefore shall a man leave his father is talking about anyone now that has a father and has a mother it's not talking about adam and eve and if you have let me say since you have a father since you have a mother it's talking about you therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they two shall be one flesh that word clean means to be joined together that word clean means to be so joined together that any separation will destroy both one side and the other side you can see then the purpose of God it is so that you have protection you have help you have support you have helper it's not good for the man to be alone as we come to genesis chapter 1 verse 27 it says in verse 27 so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them number one man was created holy righteous sanctified having the nature of god sanctification does not cancel marriage holiness does not cancel marriage christian experience does not cancel marriage you're pure you are perfect, you are holy, 
you are sanctified you are walking in the righteousness of god that does not concern marriage god created man in his own image and in the image of god created he him male and female male one female one one man one woman male and female created he them the original plan of god the original purpose of god is one wife to one man one husband to one woman that's why as we come back to first corinthians chapter 7 verse 2 you see there it says to avoid fornication let every man have his own wife man one wife and let every woman have her own husband one woman one husband you understand it's talking about both sides if it is wrong for a woman to have two husbands and keep two men at home and say these are my husbands in the plural they are all living together everybody will frown at that but understand that's only one side of the coin the other side of the coin is one man one wife if the woman cannot have two husbands if the woman cannot have three four five husbands all at the same time there then it's wrong for the man to have two or three or five wives no matter who before any church deeper life or any other church before any church ever came in genesis chapter 2 god made one woman for one man and he says therefore it will continue like that i pray that yourself your family your extended family will not change the word of god in jesus name point number two there is the preparation for marriage preparation for marriage anything good we're going to do a marriage is good family is good as you need to have a plan you need to have a project you need to have a place you are looking at and you need to have the goal you want to reach look at proverbs chapter 18 verse 22 the preparation for marriage because for those who have not married if you don't prepare how do you get a good thing from the lord even for those who have married already what kind of vision do you have and what kind of expectation do you have you must have a good expectation that aligns with the expectation of god and then you are able to move in the direction of god in your family and in your marriage look at proverbs 18 verse 22 whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the lord whoso findeth a wife you have to seek before you find ask and shall be given unto you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you and so if you find a wife you're seeking and you're seeking from the creator you're seeking from your redeemer you're seeking from your father who is in heaven which of you if your son if your child shall ask for bread will you give him a stone if you ask for fish will he give you a serpent if you ask for an egg will you give you a scorpion 
if he then being evil know how to give good things unto your children how much more shall your father who is in heaven give good things to them that ask him you find because you are asking you find because you are seeking you obtain favor of the lord because you are checking up and you're seeking the face of the lord psalm 37 reading from verse 4 in psalm 37 verse 4 delight thyself also in the lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart you're preparing to get married it's not at the time of marriage you start trying to pray you didn't pray for salvation you have not prayed in repentance you have not prayed for sanctification you have not prayed to do the will of god all of a sudden you then begin to pray pray fervently have a partner in prayer to have victory over sin you are not praying about that you do not delight in the lord and you do not pray to be so put in a good position in your relationship with god look at this delight thyself also in the lord whatever rejoices the heart of god delight in that he wants your salvation delight in that he wants your holiness delight in that he wants your victorious triumphant life over temptation delight in that he wants you to be in the will of god in every area of your life delight in that and then he shall give thee the desires of thine heart I pray God will make us delight in Him at all times, in all things, in Jesus' name. Look at number three now. Number three is the permanence of marriage. The way God planned marriage for humanity is that there will be permanence. Understand once again, we're talking about God's unchangeable institution of marriage and as you look at genesis chapter 2 reading from verse 24 therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh let's come back to adam and eve god gave eve to adam and he himself conducted the wedding brought eve to adam joined them together and then you know what happened in the next chapter eve gave the forbidden fruit to adam and he ate eve backslid adam backslid what's he going to do now and god said adam where are you who said i had your voice in the garden i became afraid because i am naked who told you that you are naked well you know what the woman you gave me beguiled me deceived me and gave me that fruit and i ate woman why did you do that the serpent deceived me and i ate now the point i'm making is this god did not say all right i gave you this woman this woman has done this and this is bringing calamity on the whole world 
and it's going to bring judgment and curse upon the whole world Eva I remove you I dissolve the marriage no God did not dissolve the marriage and when you think about a man and his wife today there is nothing that a wife can do to the husband that can come near what he did to Adam and so if God did not dissolve the marriage at that time between Adam and Eve today God remains the same God is not in the business of dissolving marriages okay because uh, she's not uh, pleasing the man well and because the extended family they do not accept uh, the position of the wife and also the children they are not accepting that the woman will be with their father and so the children will say daddy we dissolve the marriage you cannot do that God has not done that your in-laws cannot do that God has not done that and so we need to understand what God has joined together let no man put asunder you remember when Jesus came to this world and the Pharisees were having problems in their families that's why they came to ask the question can a man put off his wife for every cause look at what these women are doing look at the way they are acting they are not even uh, obeying us and our expectation in the marriage is not being fulfilled Jesus you are the master you are the teacher what do you say can we put off the woman for every cause Jesus said have you read at the beginning always go back to the beginning that he which made them the God who created them he made them male and female and then he says for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and they two shall be joined together what God therefore has joined together let no man put asunder the permanence of marriage and I pray God himself will give us the heart to remain in what God has instituted in Jesus name your family will not scatter you yourself you will not scatter your family you will not call supposed friends outside you will not call uh, family members in the extended family outside to come and scatter your family for you and drive away your husband or drive away your wife for you in Jesus name the blessings of God will be permanent in your life the wife is a good thing and the wife is a favor from the Lord and even Satan will not take the favor of God your wife your husband away from you in Jesus name point number two now in point number two the gracious unpretentious intimacy in marriage we're coming to first Corinthians chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 3 let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence the wife is not a slave the wife is not a co-tenant the wife is not a neighbor the wife is not just a friend the wife is not a live-in partner that you say well here is my place and here is my property here is my position and here is the limit where 
the wife will stay. Uh -uh. It says, let the husband render due benevolence unto the wife. On the other hand, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The husband is not a co-tenant. The husband is not one of the wife's friends. The husband is not a co-tenant, is not a co-worker. The husband is not just a breadwinner to take care of the woman and to take care of the children. You are together. And the way you take yourself, the way you love yourself, is the way you love her, is the way you love him. And then it says in verse 4, in verse 4 it says, The wife has no power of her own body, but the husband. Understand, your body is the most precious property that you have. You take care of that body. You want the body to be healthy. You want the body to be protected from harm, from injury. And the body is more important than the car. The body is more important than the building, the house. The body is more important than any physical sin, touchable, tangible sin. And if the wife has no power, no authority, no total possession over her body, but the husband has, how about the tangible property? How about the tangible, touchable things? You are not holding them. You don't have a possessive attitude. That's mine. My husband, by the way, why did you touch my phone? What are you looking for? Don't you have your own phone? Why did you touch that thing that belongs to me? What were you looking for? But you don't have power over your body and over your property. Look at the second part of that verse. Likewise also, the husband has not power over his own body, but the wife. If you don't have ownership, total supremacy, total possession over the body, how about all this thing we're looking at? The building, the car, the property, whatever, certificate, and then my salary, my bank account. You don't have power over any of those things, just like you don't have power over your body. A real marriage as instituted by God, everything is open. That's why we call it unpretentious, unpretending intimacy in marriage. It says in verse 5, Defraud ye not one the other. Defraud ye not one the other. You understand that if you look at that word the fraud after the de there is fraud you see in the family if you cheat on your husband that's fraud if you cheat on your wife that's fraud and when you reach in the papers that so and so defrauded their company this amount and then you shake your head you say ah, people of this world how bad they could be come on think about yourself you defraud your husband are you not worse than the people of the world the people of the world don't have grace you say you have grace the people of the world don't have salvation you say you have salvation 
the people of the world don't have the bible they don't have a standard to walk by you see you have a standard the people of the world don't claim to be deep or deeper but you say you are deeper and yet you defraud your wife you defraud your husband are you not worse than them defraud ye not one day other except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer it's saying as husband and wife if you are going to go into a prolonged time of praying and fasting your wife ought to know about it and you ought to let your wife know why when where was that why are you doing that you are not saying uh -uh, this is spiritual whatever your right hand is doing don't let your left hand know already the scripture clears it all that you cannot have a private decision a personal decision a protected decision wife cannot know this husband cannot know this you know dear sister you have agreement with some other sisters outside the family and those people they're the people dictating your life and once they say we are going to fast and you have said yes to them you come home and um, you are not eating your husband is saying what's happening i cannot tell you this one is mine this one is private you respect those women outside more than your wife you're defrauding more than your husband you're defrauding your husband or maybe it's the husband you have uh, gone into a particular meeting uh, and you have such close intimate relationship with those men outside and all your life is decided outside the family and once you come back home once you screw your face and you act as safe uh, you know this is no go area and your wife knows when you don't want to talk but she's your wife and she's saying my husband i know you don't want to talk but can i ask a question but you know i don't want to talk why do you want to ask a question you want to defraud your wife you live in such a way that the grace of god moderates everything you do the grace of god helps you to penetrate every area of your life and there is no hiding between the husband and the wife if you have been doing that today is a day of repentance today is a day you call upon the lord and whatever is making you to get into fraud and to get into hypocrisy and to get into lying and to get into that hard heartedness against your wife against your husband you ask the lord to break down all that otherwise my brother you can miss heaven otherwise my sister you can miss heaven on the basis that you defraud and you keep on defrauding and your bible reading and your bible study and your bible exposure does not affect your life does not influence your life does not transform your life you must bring the bible the word of god you study you must bring it to every area of your life defraud ye not one day other except it be what consent for a time that she may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again and come together again and come together again there are self deceivers they say they tell their husband you know my husband as uh, i am now 
I'm not even interested in this or that anymore. We talking, I'm not interested in talking. I'm not interested in intimate relationship. I, you must understand that this is who I am now. That's not true. The God who made us and the God who gave us his word is saying, come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. I pray we'll be obedient to the word of God in Jesus' name. I will not use any excuse to deny the word of God, to disobey the word of God, and pretend we're all right without our wives, we're all right without our husband, when it's all covered up, and then Satan will be able to enter through that crack in our lives. I pray there'll be no crack in your family where Satan's lizard will come in through that crack in your family in Jesus' name. Once you see a crack in the wall of your house, instead of just going in and coming out and you leave that crack there and you know that that satanic lizard will come in through the crack, you'll not do that. You will take time off. There's some people, they don't take any time off. They are always on the go. They carry their Bible. I'm going out to preach. My brother, preaching is good. Look at this crack in your family. And you say, I'm going for night vigil, sister. Night vigil is good. But you know, your husband is just tolerating you. Look at that crack in your wall. And lizards are coming in. And a lot of things are coming in. I pray God will make you wise. First things first. That crack should be mended first. And it is after mending that crack, then whatever you can do after all the cracks are gone and all the lizards are driven out and the house is clean and, and clear and protected and preserved anywhere you want to go with the approval of your husband or the approval of your wife go ahead the lord will prosper your way gracious unpretentious intimacy in marriage look at number one the reciprocal devotion in marriage reciprocal devotion in marriage number two required discernment with maturity number three responsible decision for marriage number one reciprocal devotion in marriage that's what we've just read that we reciprocate as you want the husband to recognize you respect you take care of you and know that you are there not just count you as a co-tenant the same thing you'll do to the husband you respect him you recognize him and you love him look at ephesians chapter 5 verse 33 ephesians chapter 5 we're looking at verse 33 nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself no exception here you don't know my wife you don't know her attitude you don't know her behavior and she doesn't merit love she doesn't merit attention you need to come and live in our house just for one day and you will realize why i cannot obey god uh -huh. you want to punish god for the offense of your wife you want to disregard god for the disobedience of your wife the lord is saying i created you and i made you i'm your creator i'm your redeemer and i'm the one protecting preserving your life 
let every one of you in particular so love his wife as himself god has spoken and because god has spoken we have no choice we cannot say okay god says i should love let me watch whether this one merits obedience to god you have to obey god whatever is happening at home whatever the challenge that's your wife just like adam kept on loving eve do you remember after the fall and even after they were driven out of the garden of eden i think if anybody will justify his bitterness against the wife adam should justify his bitterness is a bitterness against eve eve look at what you've done look at what you cost now that beautiful garden that our home that god gave us now we're driven out don't touch me don't come near me don't i don't want to say anything about you i will live without you it's just a pity god has not created another woman i would have married another woman but even though there's no other woman go your way i go my way but you know after they were driven out is she said he said this is eva the mother of all living that's respect that's honor that you will not take it on your wife whatever has happened this new year your family will be a new family yeah. new attitude yeah. new disposition yeah. new action yeah. and your life will be totally new in jesus name yeah. and you know eve did not withdraw well i'm sorry for what i got you into and because of what i got you into i'm not as intelligent as i thought i was i'm not as wise as i thought i was i'm not a good companion i can realize i got you into trouble and now they're driving us out now i'll never put my mouth on anything concerning you adam because i've seen what i've done she didn't act like that they continue like that and the lord still took care of them and put to give them coats of skin the wife will not withdraw maybe you've made a mistake apologize i'm sorry about this and because of what i have caused i apologize i'll make right my way and i will not allow that to set me back and make me act as if there is nothing i can contribute to the marriage again that's what the lord is telling us that we reciprocate as one appreciates the other as one forgives the other as one bends and yields to the other so the other side too you do that and that is the reciprocal love and reciprocal devotion that makes you to keep on as husband and wife and there will be permanence in your marriage in Jesus name so nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and look at this and the wife see that she reverence her husband i pray that will not just be bible readers bible learners bible students alone will practice what we learn what we hear in jesus name and the deeper life that people know us for they'll see that deep understanding and deep practice of the word in every one of our lives every one of our families every one 
of our members in Jesus' name. Let's come to First Peter chapter 3. We're looking at verse 1. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. It says in verse 1, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Look at this. That if any obey not the word, he's talking about now a wife that is married to an unbelieving husband. What happened is this you had married before you became a Christian as a sister, but your husband is not born again yet. Likewise, ye wives. Be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also be without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, by the manner of life, by the character, by the behavior of the wife. You see, there are Christian wives that feel that they are excused and they are released from obedience to the word of God of marriage because they would say they are talking to those who are Christian husbands and wives but in my own case my husband is living this way my husband is still in darkness my husband has not believed the gospel. My husband is not saved. And because of that, how can I listen to him? I read the Bible. He doesn't know the Bible. I go to the church. He doesn't respect the church. I listen to my pastor, my father in the Lord. He doesn't respect my pastor. Look at this. Your wives be in subjection to your own husbands. Now, there are many things that you know the husband will require to cook, to clean the home, to take care of the children, to give him attention, to take care of him. What else does not contradict the Bible? You cannot say, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. I'm a worker in the church and because of that I cannot do this, I cannot do this if you cannot wait until I come, that's your business that's your cup of tea if you are you know, harassing me and you are persecuting me because of this, I'll endure your persecution, I've made up my mind, I will not go to hell because of another man you might go to hell not because of another man but because of your disobedience against the word of God. You ought to understand that if you want your husband to be saved, your character, your behavior, your disposition, your obedience to the Bible, and your obeying instructions coming from your husband the things that do not contradict the word of God you have to be subject unto your husband it says that if any obey not the word they those husbands who do not obey the word may without the word be one it's your conversation that will win him. It's your behavior that will win him. It's your submission that will win him. The man will say, even though I'm not acting right to this woman, she still loves and she cares and she's concerned about me. Even if, um, you know, I were to be nice to him, what else will she do? And that will bring them unto the Lord. And I pray that your life will win your husband in Jesus' name. The same thing with your children. Your children, maybe they've gone to school and they're now behaving in some erratic manners. And you're saying, look at these children. Okay, I'm not going to hell because of any child. And then you neglect them. 
and you abandon them. Church, church, church. I'm a worker. I'm a leader. I'm a soul winner. I'm a member of the church. I will not lose my place in the church. You cannot even bend. You cannot even adapt anything. If the pastor does not see me, it will be as if nobody is in church. The pastor will concentrate on me. I must be there. Even if, if I lose my children, if I lose my husband, that's not wise. It's your behavior. It's your character. It's your comportment that will win your children unto the Lord. I pray God will give you wisdom in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it tells us, Likewise, ye husbands, you know, it's on both sides, reciprocal. He has spoken to the wife, now you're speaking to the husband. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with them according to knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Knowledge of mathematics, knowledge of medical science, knowledge of chemistry, according to knowledge, knowledge of political science, uh -uh. knowledge of who a woman is, and knowledge of the weakness of a woman, the thinking of a woman, the disposition of a woman, dwell with them according to knowledge knowledge of what is offensive to the wife knowledge of what will judge or destabilize the wife ye husbands don't be so hyper spiritual don't be so uh, deep in the study of the word of god that you only study the bible you bury your head in the bible whatever if your wife is crying what's she crying about if she has faith in god she'll not be crying what's she crying about if she understands the bible she'll not be crying what she's crying about if she understands i am committed i told her before we got married i am committed to the bible and to the word of god i'm on my way to heaven so what's the problem with her that's not knowledge dwell with your wife according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife what i know many husbands they claim they are saved they claim they are sanctified even before their children they don't give honor to their wife even before strangers they don't give honor to their wife even before their in-laws they don't give honor to their wife even before the friends of their wife they don't give honor to their wife and they tell us they're saved they tell us they're born again they tell us they have the hyper level of sanctification but you know sanctification will change our nature and will change our disposition and it says likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife from today you'll give honor to your wife and people will know your relatives will know they say you don't insult his wife before him because he honors his wife he respects his wife and he doesn't play with the personality of his wife it's not the outsider that will change your disposition towards your wife why is your wife dressing like that why is your wife like this why is your wife like that that's none of their business they must not make you dishonor your wife and then it says as unto the weaker vessel as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered that your prayers that your fasting that your night vigil that your consecration that your up and down today you're over there you've gone to pray then tomorrow on that platform you're praying with other people 
if you have a broken home if you have a, a, a sorrowful woman back home all those prayers on those platforms they mean nothing rectify the home and settle the home and then your prayers will not be hindered in jesus name we're coming to number two there number two there is required discernment with maturity required discernment with maturity let's look at first corinthians chapter 7 we're reading from verse 6 but i speak this by permission and not of commandment you know every word of god is given by inspiration of god and when paul the apostle was going to say something not commanded by god not instituted by god not put in place by god the lord made him to say tell them this is not my commandment tell them this is your commandment tell them you are a man you are a minister you are not god this is what god has said tell them what you are saying on this other side is not what god has said is what you are saying it will be wonderful if preachers will do like that and the things they say which are not in the word of god if they will tell the people and say that one untouchable that's the word of god that's the mind of god and that is the institution of god but this one now this is what i think let, let us know that's what you think and let us know that this is not exactly what the lord is saying and so he said this i speak by permission and not of commandment look at verse 7 in verse 7 for i would he said this is my preference this is not god's precept i would that all men were even as i am this is my preference this is not god's commandment but every man has his proper gift of god one after this manner and another after that then in verse 8 it says i say therefore to the marriage and the widows i say this not god i say to the unmarried and the widows it is good for them if they abide even as i look at verse 9 in verse 9 he now says but if they cannot contain don't say i'm following paul and then you lose your soul don't say i am going to live like paul and then you miss heaven but if they cannot contain let them marry for it is better to marry than to burn that's the required discernment we need with maturity that you're not following any preacher blindly you're not following anyone he calls himself apostle he calls himself prophet he calls himself national international evangelist he calls himself overall pastor whatever he calls himself a bible teacher understand when he's talking the word understand when he's talking something private and personal and have discernment look at number three there in number three responsible decision for marriage responsible decision for marriage my brother 
whatever decision you take you are responsible whatever comes out of that decision is going to be what you reap as what you sow and whatever comes out of whatever decisions you are taking it will be you that will bear the brunt of the difficulty that's why it says in that first corinthians chapter 7 verse 9 but if they cannot contain don't pretend if they cannot contain in the afternoon you are running here and there running here and there maybe you're a widow and then people are saying we well, praise god for brother so and so we we'll praise god for pastor so and so since his wife left and went to glory the man is even doubling his effort the man is strong the man is you know quite a good and fervent he's evangelizing he's going here and there you don't know what you're going through on the inside and so you're trying to please them but you're living a defeated life internally that's why it says but if they cannot contain let them marry you are a widow you are a widow and as a widow as a woman you're saying all the people i see in our church after their husbands have died even if they're in their 40s even if they're in their 30s they remain like that and uh, when i talked to some of them i said sister how are you feeling ah, don't talk about that i'm married to jesus i'm married to my work I'm, and it's all pretense and when you are alone all by yourself there is that loneliness and there is that cry inside you what will i do now you are not yourself and the decision you are taking is not because that's the best for you it's because that's what people think so if i say i'm praying for the will of god now what will happen nothing will happen you live your life you take this show for yourself you're not following other people they are not going to take you to heaven all the good opinions of people about you will not take you to heaven it's your private life and it's your victorious life that will make you to make it on the final day that's why it says but if they cannot contain let them marry instead of doing foolish things sinful things on in the in the home in the private and then you come out god forgive me forgive me forgive me and then you come out and you're living a defeated life if jesus comes at such a time where will you spend eternity but if they cannot contain let them marry for it is better to marry than to burn can you say that with me it is better to marry than to burn can you say that again look at the person by your side and say that to them the other side say that to them look up at me here and say it for yourself i pray that in our christian life we will not be hypocritical we will live a life that is transparent when you became born again you are not born again because of pastor so and so because of brother so and so or because of sister so and so you took a personal decision and here you are today let that personal decision holding on to your life and present yourself before the lord let that be don't do anything because of so and so because of such and such live your life approved unto god and then anytime you have to go home with the lord you will go home express way without any hindrance in jesus name let's come to point number three now point number three god's unchallengeable instructions for the marriage we're looking at first corinthians chapter 7 verse 10 
and unto the marriage I command yet not I but the Lord you understand Paul the Apostle is saying I'm saying this one now but this is not personal opinion this is the commandment of the Lord but unto the marriage I command yet not I but the Lord let the wife let not the wife depart from the husband this is the Lord this is commandment this is his word and he's saying uh, don't give any excuse I know what my eyes are seeing there I know what I'm going through there I know the challenges there don't let anyone tell you and then people leave decision of their lives to others and they say well I'm not commanding you to do or not to do but if I were you already they are telling you if I were you I will do this if I were you I will go it this way well that's the commandment of man if they were you but now the Lord says let not the wife depart from her husband in verse 10 in verse 11 and but and if she depart let her remain on marriage or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife let not the husband pack his own load when the wife is not around and then lock the house or buy the house or tell the landlord we're not there anymore i'm not going to pay any house rent anymore i'm leaving and then the wife comes home and the door is locked let not the husband put away his wife the lord wants us to remain together number one god given irreversible command from the past number two god guarded irrevocable command until the present time number three god governed irrefutable command for posterity and i pray that what god has given us for posterity for our posterity the Lord will preserve in our lives in Jesus name number one God given irreversible command from the past it tells us there it says unto the marriage I command yet not I but the Lord let not the wife depart from her husband sister if you're a child of god you will not say i know myself once i said good night i don't say good evening again once i say i'm gone everybody knows me i'm gone everybody knows that once i make up my mind before i talk that's all right i'm just looking i'm quiet but what i say finished is finished well you might finish your possibility of getting to heaven just like that don't take a decision that you say i know myself i know my mind i say good night I don't say good evening again reverse that let the grace of God come upon your life and let the word of God transform your life and it says let not the wife depart from her husband I pray God will give you grace to soften and to stop pedal and to say Lord who am I thy will be done you'll do the will of God in Jesus name
Look at number two there. And it's God guarded irrevocable commandment until the present time. Look at the first part of chapter 7, verse 11. But, and if she depart, let her remain of marriage or be reconciled unto her husband as you have led, if you have led, and now you are feeling, I cannot marry another person. What am I going to do now? And I don't want to beg the man. What do you call that? Pride. I don't want to tell the man, I'm sorry. What do you call that? That's pride. I don't want to pack my load again and say, okay, I'm back now. What's that? That's pride. And then you're using uh, what they call corner, corner method. And you are sending, don't say I sent you, just, you know, ask him, uh -uh, are you not asking for your wife? Why don't you go straight? Why don't you repent? Why don't you show humility? And kneel down, if you have to kneel down, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. And then you reconcile. We reconcile with God. We reconcile with people who have offended. And that's what God wants us to do. And I pray that humility and that gentleness and that devotion to the word of God and that obedience to the word of God the Lord will give every one of us in Jesus name Amen. number three now is the God governed irrefutable command for posterity look at that first Corinthians chapter 7 verse 11 the second part and it says, and let not the husband put away his wife. Let not the husband put away his wife. Brothers and sisters, many people have the tendency of behaving like people in their village. In their village, maybe the men are militant. The men are very strong and the men use iron hand on their wives. They beat their wives and they sometimes will even strip their wives naked. That's what they do in the village. And some people have grown up with that concept in their village or maybe in their families, near families. They know how uh, you know, the old man used to ill-treat the old woman and then uh, they will handle those women with real iron hand and they have to go to the local chief for them uh, to go and settle uh, for them. And now you're a Christian, you're a believer and every little sin uh, the food is not ready in time. My clothes are not well ironed. And then I told you I don't like this kind of food. And this is what I want. And then you keep on just preparing what you... Okay, go and eat it yourself. I'm not going to take part in that. I'm sorry, my husband. What kind of sorry? This is what you have been... I will teach you a lesson. And then you must pack your load before I come back if you don't want the unexpected to happen and if you don't want your father to come and carry your dead body out of this place pack your load and go yourself before I come back what's the matter what is the salvation we testify about where is the sanctification we testify about? What is the deeper life you are talking about? What is the Bible you say you are carrying? Here is the word of God. And I pray that the grace to follow the word of God and the grace to abide by the word of God, God will grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Okay, God will grant unto me. I said God will grant unto me you will be a model as a wife you will be a model as a husband you will be a model as a family 
and people from outside will not come and be settling quarrels for you in Jesus name when the people you think are shallow Christians they come to settle quarrel for deeper Christians there is something totally wrong but Lord will help us God will help you that your heart your family your children your comportment everything about your family will be according to this teaching of the word of God in Jesus name marriage unchangeable your miracles unchangeable your mercy unchangeable your prayers unchangeable your joy unchangeable this new year something new in every family and something new in every life in jesus name where you have been tolerating each other managing each other no management this year something new something great something gracious something enviable the lord will grant unto everyone every family in jesus name are you there are you ready new life i said are you ready new power i said are you ready new breakthrough i said are you ready new love i said are you ready rise up and open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer everything we've learned everything we've heard let's take it to the lord in a prayer let the families be new this year don't exalt your idea above the word of god don't exalt your decisions above the word of god don't exalt your personal private opinion above the word of god let god be god is unchangeable let god be god he is unchallengeable let god be god remains unswerving unchanging he says i am god I change not and Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever if you have a hardened heart tell the Lord you need a change you need a transformation if you handle families with iron hand pray let him break that iron hand that hardened heart the brutal disposition that rigid compartment let him break and destroy that have the evidence of real salvation salvation makes us nice makes us good makes us gracious salvation makes us walk according to the word of god 
salvation makes us reverse the negative lifestyle we've been living salvation makes us to leave the traditional attitude traditional behavior traditional comportment and the village kind of behavior salvation makes us leave all those past behavior and come to new life in Christ if the new life is not there there's no salvation there if the soft heart is not there salvation is not there if oppression is there in the family if fraud is there in the family if hypocrisy is there in the family if immorality is there in the private life there's no salvation there tell the lord repent the husband cannot repent for the wife repent yourself the wife cannot repent for the husband repent come back in humility come back to the word of god don't spend another day another night in deliberate disobedience don't keep on saying that's our nature in our tribe salvation changes the nature of the tribe that's our nature in our family salvation changes the nature in the family tell the Lord to make you calm into obedience with his word obedience to his truth you are not meditating you are praying you are not thinking what the man has done to me you are praying you are not an angel and then the man is the devil you have your part repent of your own part your wife is not a devil and you an angel repent of your own misdeed and let God be God let the grace of God fill your heart let the power of God transform your life let the blood of Jesus cleanse and wash away all that hatred all that bitterness all that decision 
decision orchestrated by the devil decision that is given by satan i will not apologize i will not make anything right that's of the devil and the devil is doing that to bundle you to hell don't allow satan to blindfold you no hypocrisy now no pretense now no covering up at this time reconcile repent renew your relationship and every other thing will come to place in your personal life and in your family your delight in the Lord and the Lord himself we also delight in you and I'll grant you the desires of your heart now make up your mind in this new year your life will be new your relationship will be new your behavior will be new your character will be new your disposition will be new your approach to life will be new new life new direction new attitude new behavior new lifestyle new conversation new law the golden rule doing uh, unto the other as you want the other one to do to you very thoughtful your action very thoughtful your behavior very thoughtful your relationship whatever Will be offensive to you you'll not do that to others appreciate others respect others recognize others don't be so full of yourself you forget other people have feelings too and with a changed life repentant life you can now you can now ask the lord how you want your life to be in the new year ask and it shall be given you
seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you all the promises of God are yes and amen you cannot fail what he has said he will do he will do Jesus name we pray Amen. children of God I said in Jesus name we pray Amen. the Lord answer your prayers Amen. and the Lord make everything better in your life in your family in Jesus name and the Lord make you a beacon of light to his people. Yeah. Where things have been down, they will come up. Yeah. Where things have been broken down, the Lord will build you up. Yeah. New progress for every family. Yeah. New joy in every life. Yeah. A new achievement in life in Jesus' name. All your bitterness will be turned to sweetness. All my bitterness will be turned to sweetness. This new year will be, will be the best year you have ever lived. Are you there for blessing? For miracle, yes. for power, yes. for renewal, yes. for revival. Yes. Where are you? Amen. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because we know you have a good plan for everyone, good expectation for everyone. Lord, we know that your plan, nothing can reverse. Your project, nothing can refute. We know that everything you have planned, everything you have ordained to do in every life, no devil, no Satan, no demon, no powers of the darkness can reverse it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, every youth, every student, every husband, every wife, and even the brothers and sisters who are looking forward to a happy, good marriage. Lord, I pray their expectations you will fulfill in Jesus' name. I pray that everything negative, you'll turn to positive. All the sorrows of the past, all the sufferings of the past, all the pressures of the past, all the persecution of the past. Lord, I pray, remove everything in Jesus' name. Your promises that your people have been holding on to, but they were not fulfilled before. Lord, this is the year of fulfillment. The year of endowment. And the year of empowerment. 
I pray, Lord, every sin that has stood on the way of your people, carry them off, blow them off, sweep them off in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, joy from today, peace from today, reconciliation from today. I pray that there will be healing for those who are sick. There will be deliverance for those who are oppressed. You break every yoke in every life. In Jesus' name. Lord, the light of your people will shine. All the darkness will vanish away. All the sorrows will vanish away. And I pray, Lord, beyond their prayer, beyond their expectation, beyond their stress, beyond their ability, you will open the windows of heaven and you will pour down upon all your people in Jesus' name. Those who have sinned and they repent, I pray you forgive them. Let the joy of forgiveness and the joy of salvation be for everyone in Jesus' name. All our brothers and sisters in every location, in every stage, in every region, in every local government, everywhere, in every country, and online, everybody, special blessing, bless, special miracle, special power, special enablement you grant to everyone in jesus name everyone here everyone there everyone here in on those stage everyone in all the states in nigeria everyone in all the countries i pray new life this year new power this year new achievement this year and lord i pray every prayer they open their mouths to pray unto you answer them in jesus name confirm the blessing right now as we go back home from the bible study we go back with joy we go back with answered prayer we go back with vitality we go back with stress and you clear the way for everyone in jesus name the lord bless you bless your going out bless your coming in and the lord make you to trample and tread upon serpents and scorpions and no evil power will come near your house. You'll be an achiever. You'll be a champion. You'll be a hero. You'll be the head. You'll not be tail in Jesus' name. For you, this year is your year of achievement. And your year of joy. And your year of accomplishment. It is done. It is accomplished. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name.